PFR podcast. My name is Dave. I'm joined by my co-host Ficky. Today we got a great episode. We have Robert Schmitz from the Bears blog. Obviously, you might know him from the Windy City Gridiron. He just made a move over there. He's the editor in chief. We'll get to more of that uh, once we bring him in. But Ficky, man, how you doing? Man, I'm still don't have AC and I'm moving. So today I've been yeah, it's it's been tough. So I've been sweating like I've been in two a day. So it's been a little rough. But you know what? Hey. Tops it off and makes it better. Hearing someone who watches film break down Justin Fields like to the to minute details I love it what mm -hmm. Robert and how easy digestible it is because we we talked about the end of it we walk away feeling like so smarter like just yeah. more informed about the game more about the team so the interview is great yeah he's he's great man I mean uh, like I said we we're gonna go ahead and head over there in a second but as far as Justin Fields and content this is some of the best out there I think Robert's one of the best in the business he's only getting better uh, but let's go ahead and hop over there, and we'll talk to you guys after. All right, we have Robert Schmitz from the Windy City Gridiron. Uh, he's honestly making a change here pretty soon uh, to the Bears blog, DBB, on Twitter. Uh, if you're over there on Bears Twitter, you've definitely heard of him. We're excited for his move. Uh, Robert, we appreciate you hopping on and just kind of joining us. I know it's kind of the dead of the offseason, but how you doing, man? Anytime, guys. This I'm having fun. I mean, this is when you get to dig into all that extra tape that you didn't have time to watch. We're just getting out of draft season, so we really get to know the team. I know I just did something on Cody Whitehair and Sam Mustafer, did something before then on what Chase Claypool and Darnell Mooney. Getting used to it's this is a training camp, right? Like we've got to be ready to go when the Bears get to camp. So right now is the perfect time to try out new content types. I it's great. I love it, man. We uh, I just watched your your most recent video with uh, on your new YouTube channel. I think it's just Robert Schmidt's NFL. Is that mm. correct? Okay, and it was Darna Mooney versus Chase Claypool, which we'll kind of touch on later. Uh, but we'll have that video in the link description. Definitely go ahead and Thank subscribe you. to him. Uh, but Ficky, man, how you doing, bro? Man, I'm doing good. Always having a good time talking Bears. Yeah. And, and like I say this every week, and I know people are just probably annoyed as hell, but like we're closer and closer to week one. That's all I care about. <laughs> it's like we're getting closer and closer. And uh, and you're moving, what, in two days? Something like that? Yeah. Get a little new setup. <laughs> Thank God, bro, because I've been in here, and it feels like OTAs, like I said last time. I've been sweating more in the past week than I probably have in like my whole life. So, <laughs> so, so I'm definitely ready. Not only am I ready for week one, I'm also ready for next week so I can have some nice air conditioning. <laughs> Absolutely, man. Well, we're, we're going to go ahead and get started. Today's episode is going to be all about Justin Fields. Like I said, it's kind of the dead of the offseason, but you're a film guy. This is what you do. You love it. Um, we want to kind of pick your brain here a little bit more in depth sure. when it comes to Justin Fields and kind of what you expect heading into 2023. Now, before we get into the to a deep dive, I just want to kind of keep it fun. I'm going to do a couple over and unders. Um, so you just tell me what you think and just a brief description why, or you can go a little detailed. It's up to you. Uh, we'll keep it easy with the first one. It's Justin Fields. Um, over under 24 passing touchdowns for 2023. I'm going to go over. I think you're darn close. What, does Vegas have 24? Like, no, that's we, what we that just line. came up. We <laughs> said it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because that, that feels pretty good. I mean, it's funny you say touchdowns instead of yards. I was expecting yards. yards oh, we got yards. We got but, coming up I, I know, but, but with passing touchdowns, I mean, that's just about finishing drives, right? So mm -hmm. we'll see. I think it's going to be like over, even in a really good season, I wouldn't be surprised if we get 26, 28 touchdowns in, through the air. Total touchdowns, okay. whole separate question, but that's probably coming later. <laughs> yep. I, I like that. Um, so, Vicky, what are you thinking, man? Yeah, that line is tough. We were talking about it, it but like Hertz had 22 last year. He was very efficient. So I'm like, I could see him getting 23, 24. I don't, I, I, again, I'm being a little, maybe not as optimistic. So I'm probably going to say under at 23. But that, for okay. me, that's still a good year. So I wouldn't be mad. Yeah, I think I'm in the middle of both. I think 24 is such like a spot on number. Dave, but you Hertz have to pick over year. or under. Yeah, oh, I'm going over. I'm going <laughs> okay, over because okay. I believe in this offensive unit. Uh, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. But I yeah, think it's going to be a fun. I think it's a really close line. Uh, this next one is over under rushing touchdowns for Justin Fields. Last year he had eight, so we set it at eight. What do you think, Rob? <sighs> Well, we're doing positivity. Look, Justin Fields is about <laughs> as high variance as you could ask for right now. It could it could go really badly. It could go really well. It could sit in the middle. Rushing touchdowns, quarterback power was one of their favorite calls last year, and they basically came up with it right around week seven. 
So it wouldn't surprise me if Fields is good for 10. Like you said, Ficky, if the throwing touchdowns aren't there, maybe he only ends up with 18 to 20 throwing touchdowns. Not a bad opportunity for him to end up with, what, four QB sneaks and like eight QB powers. 12 rushing touchdowns sounds like a ton. It is. But the advantage you get running the ball with your quarterback, you basically gain an extra blocker because that's obviously an 11 on 11, normally a run and play. Andy Dalton hands the ball off, quarterback gets out of the way. When your quarterback is toting the rock, let alone when he's as athletic as Fields is, you get that extra blocker. A lot of defenses don't prep for it. Bitch defenses are going to try to stop him a little more. But if you've got faith in yeah. the offense getting to the red zone, 10 rushing touchdowns is not out of the question for a guy like Justin Fields. At least that's my two cents. I think you hit it spot on because they didn't start running the ball until after that New England game. And yeah. you factor in just, you know, they're going to utilize him in the red zone. And then you, what, a play that kind of comes to mind is that one against Detroit in, at home where he, he was dead to rights and he made a couple guys miss and then just runs a guy over. So it's like, <laughs> yeah, you throw that and you throw the the easy ones and then he's going to get you a couple couple tough ones that should not be it should be a loss of you know yards and he ends up just making it a touchdown so I think that's I think I'm gonna go over two uh I think 10 good but I'll go nine uh, I can't go with you on everything Rob but Vicky what do you think man <laughs> yeah it really depends on how often we get to the red zone I really believe like I don't think we're gonna see as many like those big runs that he had last year, mm -hmm. uh, to be honest, not that he can't do them, but I'm hoping that like he has protection, you know what I mean? And he's actually right. looking to wide receivers to throw to, you know what I mean? Um, so I'm hoping that's the case. Uh, so I expect less there. And if we get to the red zone more often, I would say he would get more. So I'm going to go over, but I don't yeah. know. I guess I can't go under because I just went under with passing and that would make me seem like Fields is going to have a shitty year. So I'm going to go over. I think, I think well. going over and rushing is, is I think it's fair. I, think, I don't think anyone's going to be like, eh, I don't see it, you know, but it's you weird. never know. It's weird. I'd rather him be. Many, oh yeah. It's, it's just weird how many ways they worked Fields into the end zone with his legs. Don't forget week two, big call back to the Packers game. Remember on week two, first drive of the game, they drive down and the way I end up scoring is one of those Packers plays you've seen a million times where the quarterback fakes handoff, rolls out to his right. I think they had somebody in the flat, but Justin yeah. Fields just ran it into the end zone so you add the called quarterback runs with the scrambles like you're talking about dave that just magically end up in the end zone and these bootlegs in the or once you get to the red zone there are a lot yeah. of ways justin fields can score that would be unorthodox using his legs and it won't surprise me if the bears lean into that that's one of those stats that if i was a gambler and it depends on the day Right. I tend to think that they're never going to set the line high enough for somebody like Fields. Throwing touchdowns are going to be harder for Fields to get, for instance, from the five yard line than a rushing touchdown is. And it won't surprise me if the Bears lean into that. Yeah, especially within like the 10 yard line. I, I just feel like it's like 50 percent that even if it's a pass play, he can get 10 yards easily. So mm -hmm. I could see a lot of it. Like, especially within that 10, like if it's 20 yards out, I could see him doing a passing touchdown. But within that 10, I'm going to be looking like, Fields is probably going to score here on himself. So, and I guess this is this is off script here, but the running back room has been very you know talked about. So, mm -hmm. who do you think is going to lead the team in rushing? Do you think Fields has that capability? Me and Ficky have talked about it. Ficky, I don't think you you don't want to see it. You don't think it's going to happen. I don't want to. It, I mean, it could. I don't. That's not the ideal situation for me. I'd Agreed. rather I'd rather him pass more, but he's going to have most of the carries because I think you know he's not splitting his carries right. It's when he's running it, yeah. it's him. So we have a running back by committee. We've seen that. So I just feel mm -hmm. like you might your your uh, assumption actually might come true. I'm just hoping it's like we're more passing uh, centric instead of running. So. Yeah. Well, it's so funny to think about Fields running the ball, right? Because how many times? I mean, I don't have the answer, so we're gonna just talk in theory. <laughs> but how many times did you see Fields get the ball on a truly designed quarterback run? I think everybody keeps thinking that Fields pulling the ball on a read option or even Wilder an option tag. So look, sometimes the quarterback is actively reading the defensive end, right? That's that's read option. But other mm -hmm. times the quarterback can just pull it if he thinks he can beat the guy. Think about it as Fields having the green light on any standard run play. Because as soon as you run the ball, it doesn't matter where your offensive line goes. If you think there's open space out there, go be do, Go be an athlete. And so Fields probably legged out, what do you think, 600, maybe 700 yards without actually being touched, like before oh, contact. So yeah, those easily. don't bother me. 
like the the option runs and the scramble runs do whatever you want man like i want his total carries to come down too but it's those runs like we saw against atlanta which look irony i get it he what got hurt on that play but the ones where you know you're going to give your quarterback a hit those bother me i want to see those yeah. come down there just weren't as many of them as meets the eye miami the the touchdown called pass the touchdown against detroit called pass called the pass, touchdown yeah. against the packers like the crazy one i'm pretty sure that was an option and fields just thought he could beat the nickel corner that was blitzing him which is out of his mind if you ask me but he just did that a lot where he said nah i could beat him and apparently is one of the most special athletes in football this sounds hyperbolic but like you become yeah. a film analyst so that when you say something that sounds hyperbolic, you have the film to back it up. Justin Fields really like it's easy for we we're Chicago fans. We watched our team try to hype up Andy Dalton. We spent years <laughs> riding with Mitch Trubisky. Like, oh, God. I've been there. I was mm. juiced when we traded for Dontrell Inman. Like, he might as well have been the best receiver I'd seen in an awfully long time. At least felt that way in the moment. Justin Fields' athleticism, like the quarterback part, it's still a work in progress, but his athleticism is out of this world. And I don't know if that's going to immediately mean success, but I don't know why the long touchdowns would go away when he scored five of them last yeah. year. Like, yeah. I and mean, one was no called back. Ever, no quarterback yeah. has ever done two in a single right. season, and including the ones that called back, and I'm counting the Detroit one where he got hurt because, mm -hmm. come on. Come on. Like, he finishes that run if he's healthy. Justin Fields just did it again and again and again and again. And that doesn't count the Eagles one where the announcer basically fell out of his chair watching Justin <laughs> Fields get to the eight-yard line. You know what I mean? That one was crazy. Yeah, that one was <laughs> A couple more inches was on, on that sideline. Yeah, the Historic Hassan run. Riddick. He just – he's well, his thing Not that impresses me – I mean, obviously he's fast. We know that. But his, his body control in the pocket when he has, like, these freak athletes trying to tackle him – and how he's able to just throw people off that like that that's what blows my mind because if someone that yeah. size hit me my body would snap into eight pieces right there right i wouldn't be able to bend like that it's crazy the, the the thing i think it's for me it's the all of that but also even the acceleration and that burst that he has because it's like he these are elite dbs i mean not all of them but most of them are great athletes they're some of the best athletes on the field and you have him just out running them like they can't catch him you know and it's it's really it's it's fun to see. I, I, we we're talking with um, that franchise guy. He's on YouTube. He's a film yeah, breaker. Yeah, sure. He the thing he kind of he touched on was he thinks that Fields has done a really great job that not a lot of people thought was that when he got to the league that he's in the weight room and he's putting in the work because he wasn't this fast in at least we didn't maybe he was but he didn't see these type of plays so he believes that the weight room how he's pushing himself is just an elite level of just dedication because he just seems so much faster uh, than all these guys and they're elite athletes. So, and it's a gift because not every, you know, you have to have this gift to be able to run this fast and, right. and get <laughs> <Yeah>. that burst. But <laughs> one of I think crazy. the best parts about it. So if you take a look at the entire NFL, there's a trend with really good quarterbacks. And again, we're, we're at the, we're at the happy part. We can get to the sad stuff later. Right. But th what you find in the Josh Allen's in the Patrick Mahomes is in the Joe Burrows in the Tom Brady's in the Aaron Rodgers is like all the good guys, right. Is you can't just have your scout team quarterback imitate them and do a decent job. I hate to say this. You can imitate Mitch Trubisky. Right. But we have constantly heard people say when they get out of a Bears game last year, they go, well, he's way faster in person. And it's the truth. I mean, you can't fake this. And as soon as you think that you've at least got somebody fast enough to represent his speed, then you're not representing the fact that he's 220 pounds and right. the shoestring tackle. Yeah, the mm. shoestring tackle that you made with a wide receiver fainting Justin Fields and scout team all week, that's not going to get it done. Fields Good is going to run through that. And <laughs> uh, again, we're talking about a quarterback. So his running ability yep. is still secondary. But Fields has, I think, the hardest thing to imitate, and that's – the ability to avoid getting scouted properly. You can box him in, but you can't truly practice against him in the week leading up to the game, which leads to, like we've seen, some first halves where Fields will just bamboozle the other defense. It's not an mm -hmm. accident. It's because when you don't get any live reps against something remotely similar to what you're facing, you got figured out on the fly, and that takes time. Yep. That's a yeah, great point. That's a great point.
That's why I brought you in, Rob. <laughs> That's why we brought you in. So we'll, 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 can you, we'll do these a little quicker, and then we'll hop into the film. Uh, but passing yards, like you said, like you mentioned earlier, we have it at 3,500 over or under, Rob? Under. He just doesn't throw it enough. Uh, Fields yeah. loves to call his own number. I don't blame him. I mean, he'll beat spies in the open field. I would run if I was that fast, too. He had, I think it was 7.1 yards per rush. Like, imagine a running back with a, with a yards per carry like that. And that doesn't count, or that includes the sneaks, which tank his average. Like, it's, it is, I, I don't, I, I know that all of Chicago wants Fields to throw the ball more. <laughs> I do too. If he throws for 3,400, or if he throws for 3,450 and he runs for another 1,000, he's going to be third in the MVP voting minimum. If he throws Easy. for more than 3,500 guys, I mean, you are looking at the NFL's next MVP. Like, it's it's such a high bar. Got to remember, Lamar Jackson's MVP season, 3,100 yards passing. Like, it's <laughs> it's a different standard when you're a mobile quarterback. Yeah. So yeah. I want the 4,000-yard passer, too. It would be so ironic, wouldn't it, if Chicago really does have their franchise passer and he's still and he not a 4,000-yard passer <laughs> and we just never break that record. But well, he could be 5,000 or 4,500 total yards, you know, yeah, and that's – Exactly. I, I think that – I don't know if we – I don't know if we can count that. Probably not, but – um, okay, <laughs> no, so what do you think? Not. What do you think he ends at, Rob? Are you, you want to give just a I rough mean, estimate? Honest to God, he could be anywhere. It, it yeah. I mean, it's everything from how many games do you think he's going to play to what do you think the passing right. offense is going to look like? I will say a healthy thirty three hundred yards, and okay. wait to be impressed because again, if he throws for more, hold on to your seat. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Vicky, what are you feeling? Yeah, I'm going to go under because he only had 2,200 right. last year. I obviously expect to jump, but the, I like to go to 3,500, that'd be like saying us, like some of these Bears fans right now, we love y'all, but saying we went from three games to jumping to like 12. Like yep. it's never been done in NFL history. So that that jump, that big of a margin, we just can't expect that. So if he hits 3,000, I'm happy. I'm ecstatic, especially if the turnovers are, are lower and his run is still like 500 plus. I'll be a happy camper. But I think realistically, yep. like 28, 29. Okay. That's um, how I feel. Speaking of turnovers, uh, last one for the over and under game. Rob, we have interceptions here. We He had 10 and 11 his first two years. Uh, we set the bar at 11 interceptions. What are you thinking? Mm, let's go with. Uh... Let's go with over because I've been projecting okay. high for a reason. I do think Fields is – I mean, look, the guy spent an entire offseason, people saying that he can't throw. After an entire offseason with people saying he can't throw, he's going to try to throw the ball for better he or better. worse. And he so it, it may mean a couple extra mistakes. I mean, it may mean 12 or 13 picks. I would love for him to throw seven. But, <laughs> like, projecting over on the good thing, over on the good thing, under on and the under. Thing. It feels <laughs> yeah, okay. unfair. Like, I think <laughs> yeah. he's just going to try to throw the ball a lot more. And more okay. power to him. I hope he does. I feel that. Uh, Ficky? Yeah, so of what? I think I said, like, 23 touchdowns, passing touchdowns. So, like, yeah. I would be okay. He's got, He's going to be over. But, like, kind of what mm -hmm. Rob said. Like, if, it's tw if you have, like, a two-to-one ratio, like, I think that's good. Uh, so if it's like 23, I'll say like 12, 13, I'd be okay. But if we start getting like 16, eh, that's where I'll start to have issues. Unless, unless he's throwing like 34 touchdowns or something like that, then I'm, then I'll be all right. Yeah. If he's under, if he's single digit interceptions and he takes that leap, I think that could be crazy. Um, like oh. you kind of alluded to. Yeah. MVP That'd be remarkable. type, especially depending on if the bears are competing for the division, but and okay. That so that's enough like of but like, I know. it's real. I mean, you do you realize? I think Justin Fields was sixth in MVP voting last year. Like that, it's rushing and the rushing yeah, touchdowns. So I was talking with the coach the other day, and he talked about how there's a massive difference in feel on the sidelines between when you have somebody throw for 300 yards against you and when you have somebody run for 200 yards against you. The latter feeling way, way worse. Nobody can understand it. But if Joe Burrow mm -hmm. throws for 400 yards, Joe Burrow played great. If Justin Fields breaks the rushing record on you, your defense was terrible. You should be embarrassed. Like, everybody just feels it. Getting run on feels gross. And so – Because it shouldn't happen. It, it makes no sense. Happen, right. And it looks so easy. 
Like, mm-hmm. I mean, it's it's insulting, those games, right, where Justin Fields will pull it on. Like, I remember the first play against Detroit at, in Soldier Field when I think Justin Fields just pulled it, ran right around the edge for like 20 yards, clicked it out on the first drive, and everybody just laughed. It, it was like, it's it's so easy. I mean, yeah, at for- least throwing the ball looks difficult. I, I don't know. Right. It's it's Everybody seems like they take rushing yards really seriously in the MVP voting. So if Fields runs for, or runs for another 1,000, and throws for anything reasonable, he's going to be on people's radar, especially because everybody loves a story. And is there any stronger story than Fields right mm-hmm. now? No. Exactly. They're he's one, got spe- the biggest yeah. hype. And you're in the you're in Chicago, such a huge oh. franchise. You know, top three. You know, market. in the league as he's, far as market, yeah. yeah. And I think one of the funny things last year, I think it was uh, head coach uh, Miami, Dol- Miami Dolphins, uh, Daniels or Daniel, Mike McDaniel. McDaniel. He, uh, he, uh, he's just yelling at the side to stop it, you know, and you see fields kind of chuckle, you know, it, it's, you can't stop it, you know, and, and that's the thing. If he could just take your next step, which we're going to get into here, Rob, uh, he, Justin Fields, he's entering year three. Obviously it's a crucial season for him. Um, the Bears have surrounded him with, I would say enough weapons, especially to kind of figure out what he's oh, yeah. going to be. Um, now, so the excuses from last, the last season are no more for the most part. Um, so we're finally going to find out what he truly is. So I'm going to pose two scenarios for you. Um, Vicky, I'm gonna have Rob go first and then I'll have you kind of touch on it after. So first Rob, tell me why Justin Fields will take that uh, Jalen Hurts and Josh Allen leap. Uh, I think you'd make the argument that Fields is going to take that leap because he's going to take what he did at Ohio State, which is throw the ball to Chris Olave. Like, just watch when Chris breaks and throw it to him on trust and Mm -hmm. apply that to DJ Moore. I think in a lot of ways, DJ Moore has a very similar game to Chris Olave. I am more athletic than you. When you want to play me physical, I'm also more physical than you. I mean, when you watch DJ Moore, like, yes, there's a lot of technique that goes into him, but you're watching a guy that's just faster than you are and quicker than you are. And football for all its complexities can be an awfully simple game sometimes. And when you're, when you're in uh what cover three outside leverage and DJ Moore runs an inside dig on you, he's going to get three yards of separation. There's nothing you can do about it. And as soon as you attempt to anticipate it, he's going to beat you anyways. Just ask Patrick Sertain in that game against the Broncos where he lit him up for, I think like 150 yards and, two scores but i don't know we'll get fact check that later the point is is that fields yes he takes a couple steps forward he knows the offense better he is going to be out to prove that he can run a quick game because he was so bad at it last year uh the offensive line is a good chunk better i mean it's worth remembering how bad the offensive line was last year and now you take last year's guard you move him to center take last year's right guard you move him to left guard braxton gets a year better you've got a talent Talented right tackle that I'm probably going to be one of the worst players on the line. I love Darnell Wright. Rookies are never good. Yeah, he's and a then, rookie, yeah. Mm-hmm. And then Nate Davis comes over, and he's one of the better pass-protecting guards in the league that isn't a superstar. Like, obviously, you've got the superstar guards. But the Tier 2 guards, really good pass protector and does a good job of checking his left and his right to help out those guys mm-hmm. if they're struggling and he doesn't have anything to do. So you could argue that Fields' situation alone will lift him up. But I, I don't know. It's going to be a lot. I, I tend to think he takes that step forward because he's already identified the things that he has to fix, which are his issues in the quick game. But when he needs a play, he can just stare at DJ Moore and trust that the guy will get open. And his second option is his best friend in Darnell Mooney. So you've got a nice one-two check down passing attack that's set up for Justin Fields. And he learned last year with uh, with David Montgomery, checking the ball down to the running back can do good things for you. But I don't want to take up all the airtime. This very, very complex and widespread <laughs> thing. But I think it's truly a combination of DJ Moore le- makes him look even better than he is. And also he gets better enough at the basics to operate at an NFL level. Yeah. Vicky, man. Great points, Rob. What do you feel? Uh, yeah, one word, trust. And Rob talked about it, but it's not it's trust not only with having that guy you can go to on, you know, third down or when your first two looks aren't open, mm-hmm. right? With DJ Moore, also you trust with Darnell Mooney him being healthy as well, but also your trust with your line giving you a little bit more time cuz Fields last year was the worst when it came to time to release. 
pretty bad, right? Most of that's because yeah. he's running around, but like the line we know was garbage. And that's probably why he ran so often because he was like, oh, nothing's there. I got to go. Like there's no trust at all. And then not only that, I think another key thing is trust in the offense. It's the second year with Getsy. That means a lot. He has not had a consistent offense uh, like transfer since Ohio State, right? So to have something and kind of know the foundations, I mean, you're always learning and whatnot, but kind of you don't, you have more trust in what you're seeing as well, being, you know, second year in the system, seeing defenses as well. So I really just feel like he's going to be a little bit more comfortable. And uh, Kurt Warner on his his deep dive that he did, I don't know if it's a deep dive, but his film watching recently was talking about like how that trust is it. He's going to see when the deep, not only his biggest weakness was when he, when the defense showed you what it was, he always delivered. So if they showed you their coverages they're in, he was good. If they did a late switch, right? He wasn't as good. And as we know, his rookie year, he kind of was ass at that, like because his rookie year was also garbage, right? It wasn't really a rookie year, right, under Nagy. So I feel like I take last year as like your first rookie year. So now I feel like he has more trust because he's had more games, more game right. tape, live action where he's able to actually see defenses. And, and hopefully when certain si situations come up next season, like those late switches and whatnot, he'll know, oh, this is that, this is this, this is that. He won't be perfect, but he's going to have more foundation. So I'm I'm just hoping that there's way more trust and he can use that to be confident in his decision-making, which I think will allow for like more calculated risks, which I think will be more rewarding now that his uh, core group is better as well. I agree with all of that. Uh, I was actually going to touch on the second year thing, but I remember uh, what's funny is I think Fields is an entirely different um, prospect in, in general when it comes to Mitch Trubisky. But I remember 2018 season heading into after 2018 had transpired. We hear, you know, 202. Um, oh, my God. Maggie's, oh. <laughs> and, and it's like almost like it's like PTSD where I'm like, I don't really want to buy into that, you know. But I think Fields is a lot. I think he's just he's just better. You know, I think he as far as a prospect, as far as where he, at, he is at. I think he's just going to be completely different than Mitch. And I think he's already at a higher level. Um, what do you think, Rob? Well, the biggest difference between Fields and Mitch is they ha they ultimately are going to be evaluated on different standards. It's not fair, but life's not fair. I mean, you got to remember yeah. that Justin Fields is – running ability. I keep talking about it for a reason. And that's because when you're better at than the defense at anything, it becomes an edge that the defense has to overcompensate to take away. I mean, when Justin Fields is standing in the pocket, you're going to see one, if not two defensive tackles rushing to contain. This means they're going to attack the quarterback less on purpose, which could very well create inside lanes for Justin Fields to step up for free so long as he doesn't try to run. So then Theoretically, he gets longer time in the pocket and he's going to have a spying linebacker sitting in front of him, meaning that the defense has to run a six man coverage net. Mitch, he's going to get rushed straight up by four guys, if not blitzed by five, and they're going to play all seven of their guys in coverage, meaning Mitch has to be basically Tom Brady. Fields doesn't. Fields is so dangerous that all he has to do is flash his athleticism from time to time, and the defense should give him passing on easy mode. They may blitz him now and again, so as long as he can beat a blitz, like throw over the top, hit Cole Kmet on something fast, give the ball to Darnell Mooney or DJ Moore, or mm -hmm. just flick it out to a running back for, again, all you need is like six to ten yards, then you're going to keep the chains moving, you're going to keep the defense on the back foot, and it will look easy. You will see this. If Fields is good, you will see people on Twitter, Vikings fans, Packers fans, Lions fans, etc. They're going to call him overrated. They're going to cite his stats. They're going to say he's not doing anything hard. He won't be. At least it won't look that way. But he's so dangerous. He has forced defenses to have to try to check him. And in so doing, they're opening up other ways to beat them, as opposed to defenses that would square up a guy like Andy Dalton and say, this is our defense. Do what you want. We've like, we're going to be fine. We're not worried about you. Make sense? Oh, yeah. I love it. I, I actually think had something to follow up with that, too, because, you know, you're talking about like, you know, blitzes coming off and being able to check down and whatnot. And as we and what we know with Fields is he's always had kind of a touchdown to check down mentality mm -hmm. instead of like a check down to touchdown. <laughs> and, you know, but my question is now if the team didn't get better, I would be like, hey, you know, let's look more check downs. I still feel that's important. But like when you have DJ Moore and uh, Darnell Mooney and Chase Claypool. Do you actually think that he's going to go more into check down to touchdown? Or is he like, oh, my guy's up there? Like we were talking about. I'm yeah. just going to throw it. 
he had a really bad habit of getting stuck on the touchdown read last year, like where he'd really want it, but he wouldn't throw it. And so he'd end up giving up whether it was a fumble or a sack. I mean, these are drive killing plays. Like I love Justin Fields. I love throwing touchdowns. Who doesn't love throwing touchdowns? You love a quarterback that's gutsy enough to try, but at the same time, like you're talking about, I mean, you, you can get stuck on that. You can get so focused on it that it becomes a negative because if you only hit the touchdown play on one in 10, you killed nine other drives to do it. So I I hope it depends on formation. My honest, I think you brought it up perfectly. Fields was still kind of putting together how to read a defense last year. And that's fine. Patrick Mahomes admitted in the year after his MVP that he only really clicked on how to read a defense near the end of his second year. Crazy, and, by the way. I what mean, a flex. Like Defenses what? <laughs> are hard. Like yeah, you're yeah. winning off physical tools up until then. Does that sound familiar? But the <laughs> issue that the Bears ran into was that near the end of the year, teams were just squaring them up in straight man. And Equinamia St. Brown and Dante Pettis couldn't win a one-on-one -on -one matchup to save their lives. And there is no progression if your guys can't win the one-on-one. -on -one. Offenses are designed to create one-on-ones in the first place. If you can't capitalize on your chances, you're host. So yeah, I so. I tend to think, to, to fully answer your question, I do think we're going to see more deep attempts by or, by Justin in deeper open windows. But at the same time, I tend to think that Justin has to work the very short areas of the field a little more. We know he loves to throw deep and intermediate, meaning defenses know he loves to throw deep and intermediate. He's got to hit just a couple little, little slant, little out route, little crosser, little check down to bring the defense forward just a little bit and create that whole shot against like cover two, cover three, et cetera. I was, um, I was listening to, I think it was Hogan Johns, if I'm not mistaken. I think Fishbane was on there. Um, and he they, they were talking about fields, and it was like a Q&A. And they said, I think it was Fishbane, he said that he believes Justin can actually read coverages like pretty well. The thing that he was noticing is that he just wasn't like, uh, he wasn't convinced. He wasn't throwing like NFL open. He just wasn't convinced that it was mm -hmm. open. And that was, and he wasn't pulling the trigger, which kind of, it kind of makes it almost seem like he's struggling to, to read right. that defense. And so, and then he touched on this OTA and mini camp where he's like, you don't see that with more. He just, he just trust. throws it. And it's oh, that it trust. Is. And yeah. it's, it's, and you kind of similar. Cause like even coming out of college, we all know, like that was one of his main, I think, takeaways was one of his struggles was he might not be reading quick enough and so obviously he still has a long way to go i think but at the same time it's kind of encouraging that they're seeing you know in minicamp that oh when you have you know uh number one like more you're seeing fields kind of just okay uh it's a tight window but i'm, I'm gunning in and he has a, a pretty powerful arm in my opinion so it's going to be interesting to see kind of once mooney and claypool also get on the field you know in, in about a month here in training camp kind of see kind of what windows he's throwing into, especially kind of from last year to this year, you know? So there, I'm excited. Yeah, there's a reason Chef Poles made DJ Moore be in that trade. Like, there's a reason that he did yeah. that, right? You look at the, the NFL is a copy league. Just like a lot of these sports, they see what works, and they say, okay, we're going to kind of copy that. And we've seen – the only reason we're having this Hurts discussion, right, is because Hurts got who? A.J. Brown, mm -hmm. right? You look at – and then obviously again compared to Josh Allen. Josh Allen got who? Stephon Diggs, right? So they they see the value of like it's a team sport. You're going to need someone that when it's – when the play breaks down or something's not open, let me go to my trusted safety net, and we have that with DJ. So I think, you know, that's going to lead to those decision makings where he's like, no, I trust – I trust when I throw the ball, he's going to be there, and not only is he going to be there, he's going to catch it. You know what I mean? Because how many yeah. drop passes we saw last year? Important clutch. Tons. We lost like three or four games because of drop passes. So mm -hmm. I, I could understand why he, you know, maybe wasn't throwing certain plays. I wouldn't either. <laughs> to be honest. So. There were some of them where Justin Fields double clutched way too often. I mean, you would mm -hmm. see what looked like a pump fake and then you'd go watch the all 22 and you'd see, oh no, you were right. You should have thrown that. And it wouldn't surprise me, especially because it's OTAs. I mean, it's not a game. It's not even televised, yeah. right? If Fields is trying to work that out of his system, because that's one of those nagging habits mm -hmm. that if you don't get over that, that is going to kill you in games. And so I imagine that, I mean, I know we read about a couple of interceptions that he really is. People clown on it because we heard Nagy say it, but it was a it's a real thing. 
that you have to get your quarterback playing loose in practice, even if that means you're throwing interceptions, because if they're tight in practice, they're going to be even tighter in a game. So I'm right there with you, David. I want to see if Fields, once he gets Mooney and Claypool back, if he is going to cycle through his reads or if he's just going to stick on DJ Moore. Truth be told, I don't know if I care. Because just sticking on DJ Moore and throwing on time <laughs> Sounds is good to going me. <laughs> to look fine on yeah, it'll be a much lot better. of passing plays. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And so, so long as you trust DJ Moore to come out of his break and at least contest enough to knock the ball down, there's a lot. There's way more plays in football that are one reads, that are like one read plays, than I think a lot of people realize. People look at a play like, um, you remember the second Packers game, the interception that fields through when Equinamius ran like a terrible route and oh, Jair Alexander yep. jumped in front of him. Yep. I, yep. I had people all over the place that – were jumping on me because I wasn't saying Fields should have, I don't know, not thrown it. And it's like, that's the read. That's open. Like, you're running that play for your receiver. The quarterback is just supposed to stand and deliver on time. It's football so much more complicated than people think yeah. it is. But because of Madden, love you, Madden, we're convinced <laughs> that there's always a three to five layer read. And right. on like a sprint out on third down, no, like, you just got Darnell Mooney. If he's covered, that's too bad. Like, there's not really another option. It's it's such a funny game. Love it. It's it's funny you say that play because I I've been doing this thread on Twitter where it's just I, I do a Justin Fields play random play every day right. and uh, now I'm getting to the point where I have to really dig in because uh, mm-hmm. like the main popular ones are kind of just already used. They're gone. So now there's a throw against the Vikings to Dante Pettis. Just easy throw to I think it was uh yeah to Dante Pettis and just drops it. And I'm just like, you You see those plays. I'm like, that was 15, 20 yards right there where it's just it, he missed. He just didn't catch it. It was maybe a tad high, but obviously hit him in the hands. Where he goes up for it, and, like, the DB competes for it a little bit, but it hits Dante no, in the hands. No, this is um, – maybe – there was no DB really in it. It was, like, gotcha. in the middle of – between the safety and, I think, the DB. Yes. Um, no, I remember what you're talking about. Yes. Yeah. bad. <laughs> yeah, and I'm just like – I'm like, that's 20 yards, man. That's 20 yards, and it's a first down, and 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 it's dropped. So it's like that's that's taken off the stat sheet, and it kind of really – you know, as, as far as drives go, it's a killer almost. And so – but underneath that play is a Packers fan that – I don't even know if he's a Packers fan. He just trolls – he's on every – I see him everywhere. He just – every Bears tweet, he's just under. And he put that play that you're talking about with Alexander. And I'm just like – I didn't even – I don't know if I even responded to it, but I'm just like, man. Like, it's his rookie year, you know, I believe, right? That one we're talking about. And I'm like, no, I think it was here? last year, wasn't it? Wasn't it last year? Was it last year? Okay. It, was, it was when he ran Still, a, he though. ran a, he ran like a curl or a dig or something. He's supposed to come back yeah. to the ball. Am I, am I reading that right, Rob? Is that what happened? Yep. He's mm-hmm. supposed to come back to it and he didn't. And basically, J- Jire jumped it. So, which he's a great corner. I think he's a very good corner. I think oh, he's a top he's a paid player. corner, right? I think we talked about that a couple yeah, weeks ago. Yeah, he's top five. He's top five. Yeah, he's paid a lot. At that point, on that one, you're just expecting ESP to be able to make a cut back to the quarterback without needing yeah. seven steps to do it. I mean, but, it's an NFL athlete. You're hoping you get two, like two steps to stop and one step to break back to the ball. Worst case scenario, it's four steps to stop, one step to break back to the ball. Took ESP six, which gave the route away. We could get into yeah. it. It's it's a bad route. Like sometimes you can get so into the football jargon that it just doesn't matter. Anymore. Like that was a bad route. It's thrown on time. Just Fields got punished for it. Whatever. We live with it. He won't be on, making right? that play this year, though. That's that's the good thing is that our wide receiver bench. three is Chase Claypool. You know what I mean? Like, so you, hopefully, again, I keep going back to that trust. It doesn't mean people won't make mistakes and whatnot, but you're hoping that the 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 mistakes and the margin of error and the the impact that those errors have aren't as drastic as we saw last year. So we don't see as you know. The, the mistake doesn't cost us the game. You know what I mean? So I saw so many games where it was like one little thing that like any mm-hmm. average person probably just like, you know, whether it be catching the ball or something like that, or even Mooney. Mooney dropped that one in the end zone. You know what yep. I mean? Stuff like that we saw like three or four times that cost us games, and that's what bad teams do. Good teams, their errors are very marginal. I mean, they're less marginal, and then so they don't have as many like drastic, impactful mistakes. There's some irony in you bringing up Claypool when you're talking about trust, but we'll get there. We'll get there yeah. later in the show. Well, yeah, uh, so I feel that. We'll finish this up with Justin Fields, and we will get to Chase Claypool. Um, now, jumping into the film, because you watch a lot on Justin mm-hmm. Fields. You've done it all off season. I'm sure you're still digging into it. Um, I just want to we – we're talking about a lot of positives regarding him. 
I want to know what are three concerns that you've that you've noticed that could hinder him from taking that next step to reaching his full potential uh, that you've seen in film. Just three things that are just like, ah, you know, that's got to change. You know, number one, he is outstandingly late way too often. I mean, sometimes he's not even a click late. Sometimes it's two clicks late. I mean, just if you really want great examples, you can think of any time Justin Fields ends up in garbage time. For some reason, he ends up, he looks at a read, it's open. He thinks about it too long. It's not open anymore. He decides, I'm going to throw it anyways, and throws a ghastly interception that he would never throw outside of garbage time. But for some reason, they always show up there. In the game, he's just not throwing those. And so you end up with plays you have to make to use an easy way to contextualize this. Mac Jones makes these plays. And Justin Fields, if he can make these plays, is going to see that Josh Allen step because he's doing a lot of the hard stuff. He's just got to do a lot of the easy stuff. That's the key here. It's supposed to be easy, but it's obviously not. We need to see him take a step forward and hopefully the better cast around him helps him do it. Number two, he really doesn't like throwing without the laces on these quick balls. Like it's an under talked about thing, or maybe it's over talked about, depends on which Bears fan you ask. But a lot of quarterbacks have massive hands and they have them for a reason. It's because when you're going to do the West Coast ball, like a quick slant or a quick out or a bubble screen, you catch the ball, you throw it as is, whether you get the laces or not. Justin Fields has very small hands for a quarterback standard. I can't remember what it is. I think they're bottom 10th percentile. So he's wow. tried to throw without the laces, and it looks like he's throwing a wet ball. This especially became – I think it got in his head because he had a really long string where he fouled up a lot of them all in a row, or he fishes for the laces and blows the timing of the play. So I would love to see that change or just abandon the extra quick stuff and give Fields a three-step drop where he can set the laces on his hand and set it some of these one-step drops. And then for the third thing, I would love to see Fields' accuracy tighten up a little bit. We know Fields to be a really accurate quarterback, and he is. But also, there are some times where the ball is about a foot off one way or another. So it's a long throw. And again, we're coming from watching Mitch Trubisky, Brian Hoyer. Uh, we watched Caleb Haney for a very long time. Jay was never accurate. Bears fans, I don't blame you if your eyes don't really know accuracy. They're, it's hard. Right. But Fields, for as accurate as he was built in college, he can throw a really great fastball that will occasionally land a foot out in front, two feet too low. I'm hoping that a better settled pocket is able to settle him down, let him get into more natural throwing mechanics. And he was relearning how to throw last season, which those mechanics may have messed with his downfield accuracy a little bit because it's clear he learned to throw the ball as a shortstop more, more so than as a quarterback. And if you need a great example, go watch the difference between the way C.J. Stroud throws the football and the way Justin Fields throws the football. One learned to do it as a quarterback, and one is throwing like a multi-sport athlete. It's part of why Fields has that velocity you talked about, David, because the ball explodes off his hand like he's trying to catch a runner out at first. So – I want to see those three things fixed. You'll know I didn't say reading the field. I didn't say yeah. what, um, I don't know, like deep balls. You know what I'm saying? There's a lot of things I've seen with fields where people are criticizing him, but it's a lot of these little things, very tiny little details that I think are the gates to a bunch of first down, second downs, third down conversions, and just extending drives, game yards, little by little in aggregate. I, I agree with all that, honestly. That I was expecting almost to bring up the, you know, reading the field, uh, but I think those other three are just perfect. Uh, Ficky, do you have anything to add there, man? Yeah, I mean, I'm not going to have as much uh, in-depth analysis as our man Rob over here. Like, he hit it on the nail, but basically if I had to, like, sum it up, like what I was thinking anyways was, like, hit the layups. It mm -hmm. seems like Fields is out here hitting – if we're going to go back to – a baseball analogy right this man is easy he can get homers all the time but getting yep. the singles when you need to it's like come on bro you're striking out so you know i i hope that he can get those because that i feel like those are the ones that really extend the drive and really going to allow us to score more so mm -hmm. you know we think about that uh one play that i feel like was talked to death last year about the one in the end zone it was like that overthrew the oh yeah to the oh. tight end uh second string what is his name uh, I can't it was remember. Griffin. It's Ryan Griffin. Griffin. Yeah, it? yeah, Ryan Griffin. <laughs> and, and to be fair, he was not the, you know, if that was Komet, that's a catch, but you got to make that, you got to make that pass. Like, yeah. come on, man, that's easy. So I feel like there was a couple of them. I, I think I remember some third and shorts that, like, after the running back, he would miss or something like that. It hit the dirt, and it's like, 
how, like, how is that possible? It's it literally just a little a drop off. So just hope he can kind of like clean those up a little bit. And then, you know, I feel like that'll help at least create like a, a overall better catalog of plays that he can do. So I think, yeah, I like all that. Now, Rob, you, you talked about the deep ball, um, Justin Fields. I think a lot of us, you know, hear, Oh, he has, it's a great deep ball. You know, I want to know how rare is that to have as a quarterback? Is that pretty common or what do you think? Like, as far as like him having that, is that, is that kind of like a special of his or is that more just like most gr- good, great quarterbacks have one? I don't know. That's a really good question because I, you can obviously think of a bunch of quarterbacks that have absolute sizzler deep balls. But when you aren't a fan week to week of a team, you don't see the misses, right? Like yeah. a standard quarterback can converts maybe 45% of their – like we're talking 20-plus yards, right? Like you don't mean the intermediate like frozen ropes. We're talking the deep yeah, ball, right? The 20, yeah. The Bears didn't throw many of them. Like, I mean, they didn't have very many pass attempts in the first place. I think they wanted to. Like, they wanted to run a play-action offense that got the ball deep. But compared to those Chiefs offenses that you've watched, the Patriots offenses, the Bears just didn't run enough plays, certainly enough, like, passing plays that resulted in a throw to attempt more than a handful of deep balls a game. Fields, according to, I think his name is Johnny Kingsley, uh, he's Brickwell Blitz on Twitter. He does a deep ball project every year, and Fields ranked pretty favorably in it. So that's great. But it's so funny, David, because most accurate deep ball, least accurate deep ball it's like well fields can hit the broad side of a barn which is great i think he's constantly trying to figure out how fast his players are running for instance mooney's crazy one-handed catch against minnesota i'm convinced mooney misread it that it was a crazy catch but mooney slows up before he reaches back for the ball and i think had he just faded out and gone over his left shoulder very very difficult catch so maybe he just didn't want to that he might have had a catch for a touchdown but i mean every offense looks really really herky-jerky when you're talking about guys in a new system doing something for basically the first year it's, is it really any surprise that the guys who look the freest and easiest doing it are the guys like Mahomes and Kel or Mahomes and Kelsey, but Mahomes and Hill for years there, like year three, it looked easy because it was as if they'd done it a million times. They had, and so yeah. sometimes, sure, you get the like Hill Waddle thing. I know we're off on a, like a small tangent, but it's more to say that I think it is rare-ish for quarterbacks to have that kind of deep ball, but the ones that don't have that kind of deep ball fall out of the league pretty fast. Interesting. Awesome. Thank you for that response, man. Like I said, I'm putting you on the spot there. No, totally. Um, so I think that that will kind of wrap up Justin Fields. Um, sure. We appreciate just, again, hopping on just talking about that because I think everyone wants to know as much as they can about Justin Fields heading into year three. Now, you just came out with an awesome video. I've watched it. Um, Vicky, I think you've watched it as well. Um, about Chase Claypool versus Darnell Mooney. First of all, you know, I think I, I'm pretty – I'm optimistic when it comes to Claypool. Yeah. I, I try to be because we just don't know. We, and I'm not – there's not going to spend, spend time to be negative. But you had some very interesting points. Um, you – and I don't want to give it all away because we want everyone to go watch the video. You can give it but away. You, you talked about <laughs> Claypool <laughs> – you talked about – okay. You talked about Claypool and his role and that DJ Moore being brought in kind of changes things with that because they're both X receivers, right? Um, right. What is what you mentioned. And DJ Moore is now going to be the primary target. You know, it's safe to say. And then Mooney likely is going to be, yeah, Mooney will likely be number two. Um, That could change, especially if Claypool kind of rises to the occasion, which is a good thing to have. But um, you also said that um, you think Mooney will be here for quite some time. So that kind of leads me to my question. You, you, you You talked about Claypool. First of all, I want to know what you like about Claypool and what you think he can bring to this offense, you know, at its peak maybe. And then why you think Mooney might be here longer um, than than Claypool. So Claypool is an outrageous talent. If you were going to rank the talents on the Bears, like in total, positionless ranking, Chase Claypool, if he's not top three, might be number one. Justin Fields probably ends up the best physical, like, person of or on the football team. Tremaine, Tremaine Edmonds is up there because he's just a freak. Uh, but Chase Claypool, if you go look at his mock draft spot or mock draftable spider chart, doesn't have nigh anything in the bottoms or in like below 70th percentile. And I'm pretty sure it's just about all 80s. He is an outrageous athlete. I'm sure you guys have heard this before. There are three players 
in history that are 220 pounds, have run a 4-4 or better, and are 6-4 or taller. That is Megatron, that yeah, is Calvin. DK Metcalf, and that is Chase Claypool. So he's on these like rarefied physical talent lists. But I will go to my grave saying Anthony Miller was the most talented Bears receiver in 2018, in 2019. Yes, more talented than Allen Robinson. Talent that doesn't have the right attitude on the football field it's doesn't garbage. matter. And doesn't matter. The, the really hard part about football is – we like to talk as fans because we've done it in Madden a million times, right? Where you fantasy draft, you get Jamar Chase, Justin Jefferson, and uh, DK Metcalf. They're all the same team. Yes! So my wide receiver three is this guy. In that real-world scenario, uh, Jamar Chase would demand a trade. Like, the you're, you would have receivers that would just get set. I mean, play calls feature a specific guy. Yes, you're technically number one, two, and three in the progression. But Justin Fields, I said that I think Darnell Mooney's going to end up being a number two. Because even if Mooney is the number three in the progression, Fields knows where he is. These guys spend all their time together. Right. And so that second read, it's so critical. You trust that guy implicitly because you're going to have a split second to take one step to point at where that guy is. And if he isn't there exactly where he's supposed to be, exactly when he's supposed to be there, you won't even see him. It'll be like he's not there. The All-22 may show that Chase Claypool, because he threw in an extra move and freelance to go somewhere else, is wide open. But Fields will not see him because football's fast. Like right. you, you really have fast. to you have to go from spot to spot. And if you don't, if they're not where they're supposed to be, then that's all your brain's going to tell you is they're not where they're supposed to be. So it gets tough because I mean, honest question for you two. While I keep going, how many times in a football game would you, given the choice between calling a play for DJ Moore or calling a play for Chase Claypool, same route, right? Oh, you DJ, just matter which one. <laughs> Are You're you going to arguing? DJ. Yeah, you're you're not ne you're never yeah, really gonna a pick question. Chase. So yeah, it's not a you question. might pick Mooney at times when you want to feature a slot receiver. You might even pick Chase at times if you want to feature a slot receiver. But Chase, who was going to have this really big role in Chicago, is gonna have to find a role. And I tend to think that 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 him being basically in transition one way or another, whereas more his role is established, you've already got teams to or like teammates talking about, oh, number one and number two, like they're gonna go off. We know Fields and Mooney have that on and off the field connection. I personally think it's more of a writing on the wall thing as well as a positionlessness. But I'll tell you what, I am so stoked that Ryan Poles. If the DJ Moore move was a referendum in any capacity on Chase Claypool, I'm glad he had the guts to be willing to call out his younger self, so to speak, because I think the wide receiver room is much, much better for it. If DJ Moore tweaks an ankle, Chase Claypool is a much better one than ESB was, or a much better X receiver than ESB was <laughs> yeah. to then line up and play the position. Yeah. So the receiver room is deep. Or Claypool's going to have to figure out what his game day role is. And the mm -hmm. other really good news, nothing motivates an NFL football player like money. And Chase Claypool Facts. is in the last year of his contract. If he doesn't <laughs> buy in, he's he's not going to get paid this offseason. Yeah. This yeah. is it. So, yeah, he's going to try to ball out, not just for this team. For This is his game tape for you everyone need else block? in the NFL. You know what? Sure. You need me. You need me to run like the flat route. You know what? Fine. I'm like yeah. I, I can't guarantee that he's gonna be stoked about it, but I don't think we, the fans, will care. Like, no. If you can be a talented wide receiver three, awesome. We love it. So do you? Th so if he has a good year, let's just say overall, all three wide receivers have like all respectable good. years. Yeah, yeah. Like DJ does his thing, gets his thousand. Mooney, you know, seven, eight hundred, whatever, but looks good, and then chases. Wide receiver three, like 700, something like that, sure. right? So does he get extended, and does he even want to stay? I think does it's the latter part that's more important. I mean, yeah. Fields and Mooney are so tight that if you told me straight up that Mooney was willing to take a little less to stay in Chicago, I'd believe you. I mean, I that's the kind of stuff. When, when I talked, Dave, about him staying in Chicago for a long time, I struggle to imagine Darnell Mooney in this situation unless, like, next year goes really badly wanting to leave. But Chase, he ain't I, – I don't even know if he's bought a house in Chicago. He probably has. Mm -hmm. These guys can buy and sell houses. It's not that big a deal. But it's like I imagine Chase wants to be the feature guy 
somewhere. So the Bears may offer him a nine to $10 million deal at that point. Would he take it? I wouldn't be surprised if he wouldn't, but we'll see. I mean, maybe there's a world where all three of them are extended, but guys, let's be honest. DJ Moore goes and gets a thousand. He wants new money. This is his last year of guaranteed money. Like the wide receivers are ruthless, more power to him. The bears traded for, or like he was part of the bears trade down. Like the bears traded for him. Moore's got all the leverage he wants. And I think he's got what Drew Rosenhaus representing him. Like we're yeah. getting really deep into the interpersonal yeah. weeds and speculation, but big on. agent though. Yeah. If he's getting you, his money. If you were DJ Moore, wouldn't you oh, yeah. want new paper? Like Absolutely. just cause you could after 2023. And Absolutely. The, the thing with uh, Justin Fields, like if he takes that leap that we talked about, I mean, who knows? Maybe, you know, Moore may want his money, of course, but maybe Claypool, depending if, you know, the chemistry is going good, they they are competing for, you know, maybe a wild card spot. They get a wild card spot this year. You could see the growth in Fields, and then you're thinking maybe contending in the next couple of years. So maybe he wants a ring. You know, maybe he is able to kind of take a little bit of a, you know, a discount if he is playing pretty maybe. well. It's going to be fun, man. I think it all, you know, if everything goes well with Fields, I think the Bears are going to be so flexible where you could go get another receiver, you know, next oh, year's yeah, draft. Yeah. Or oh, Tyler easy. Scott, you know, could be, you know, come up up and coming. You know, it's going to be – I think there's so much positivity and it. it's going to be really fun um, just to cover, you know. And like yeah, you said before wait. we recorded, Rob, last year was terrible. It was really hard just to – It was dog said, shit. A deep dive it wasn't into terrible. Film. It was it was dog shit. Let's be real. It was so bad. <laughs> so bad. So bad. So bad. Ways to get through these games. Like I. Did. Oh my god. It was, it was, it was ugly. And then once Fe- and once Fields was out, it was. I still watched because I, I'm manipulated. But like, it was like, yep. what? What am I doing? I could literally be doing something else, more, way more enjoyable for three, four hours of my day. And I sit here and watch this. Team. It's so funny you mentioned Tyler Scott. I've seen so many people. Talk about, well, Tyler Scott's got the body type of Darnell Mooney. Obviously, he's the Mooney replacement. Why can't we just have two good receivers on the team that play like each other? I mean, it never bothered Seattle to have Curse and Doug Baldwin and then add Tyler Lockett, despite them being similar. Like, Mm -hmm. can't we just have good players and create good depth on the roster? Like, it's... I think it's... um... (laughs) <laughs> I literally said that last pod, maybe a pod ago. I was just like, I I hear that Darnell Mooney replacement. I'm like, I like Tyler Scott, but that's disrespectful. I'm like, yeah. Mooney is so on. disrespectful. Like, like what? <laughs> Have you guys like, not seen Mooney play the past three years? Like, what are you talking about? Like what he what Mooney does is not easy. And Scott oh. hasn't even played a snap yet. And I hope he's successful because the more weapons, the better. You know, I hope for, he well, is fields. Mooney. That'd be great. Yeah. Oh my god, what a problem <laughs> to have. Darnell well, Mooney's? <laughs> yes. Well, here's a this goes to my point. I talked about this. Uh, uh, my question, I should say, that I proposed that we talked about on a previous pod was the disrespect to Cleo Herbert. And so Roshan Johnson is just going to take his spot. How do you feel about that, Rob? I think Cleo Herbert is a ridiculously underrated runner that pairs perfectly with Fields. I mean, to me, at least, Cleo Herbert is the perfect counterbalance. A lot of people keep wanting to create thunder and lightning. Two lightnings are way more dangerous than thunder and <laughs> yeah. lightning. Because when Fields threatens to go left and Khalil Herbert threatens to go right, you stretch the defense. And then Khalil Herbert is particularly good at this like one cut where he will, where he's what headed on outside aim point outside. Everybody's flowing outside. He plants his foot and he beats everybody up the backside and bursts up the field. It, these are the runs where the when ones. you're watching the broadcast, it looks like Khalil Herbert kind of just ran straight forward. And now there he is 50 yards downfield. He does this a lot. And it, it particularly takes advantage of the fact that every time Justin Fields hands the ball off, you've got a backside defender cheating to try to catch Justin Fields on a potential bootleg that when he's handed the ball off, now you got a defender slightly out of the gap. And so I think Herbert rules. Now, if I was Khalil Herbert, I would have bought a jugs machine. I would have spent the entire offseason with a coach throwing passes to me because, I mean, goodness gracious, if you can catch it all and pass protect at a decent level, Chicago may actually pay you even in the day and age of like not paying running backs and whatnot, right? This could be an Aaron Jones situation or Roshan Johnson could replace you. Those are your choices, right? (laughs) Herbert's an awesome runner. He's been a less than stellar. The the worst part is because it's the blocking and the receiving, it's just any passing down. Right, yeah. like it kind of like that's so many downs. It's a lot of downs. <laughs> a lot of downs. It's a lot of downs. <laughs> and it's a, it becomes a cue too. 
where as soon as Herbert enters the game, the defense right, you will attempt running. to D you up that way because they don't think you've got a viable checkdown option. So I'm hoping that Herbert just spent time getting decent at chilling out and catching a dump off for crying out loud because he caught that touchdown against New England that was effectively a dump off and ran oh, yeah. it in for that a touchdown. A it's not impossible. But if he could do that, I'm with you guys. The, the disrespect for his running ability, everybody does with all rookies, right? Everybody, like, the I hype. like a lot of these rookies. And then people go, I I go, I like Javon Dexter. And then people are like, yeah, how many sacks do you think he'll have? Eight? And I'm like, no. No. <laughs> like two, one and a half maybe? Like, what are it's a rookie. It's the, we get, the NFL is this, they sell hope. They don't sell jerseys. They don't sell tickets. They sell hope. And so right. it's. Uh, the disrespect every time with these rookies that they come in and just disrespect something. The funny thing is, like, going to Herbert is, like, we all were praising Herbert so much last year. He was the dark horse. You couldn't find one person that did not like Herbert. And then here comes a rookie, and it's like, yo, fuck this guy. So it's just kind of funny to see. <laughs> I'm like, what him. happened? <laughs> it's like, bro. Yeah, I like Foreman. I do I like, like Foreman, Foreman too. People go, I like Foreman. He's going to replace Herbert. And you go, why? Why? Uh, why do we got to It's such a shallow. It's like, <laughs> maybe it's just something to talk about, you know, on I Twitter. Guess. It's, you know, it is it, funny, it's but I'm like, get, what? Get the people going. It definitely, it definitely <laughs> is something to get the people going. It, it gets me going on the other side. Over yeah. Here, so. Well, uh, Rob, man, we appreciate it. We, I, I can't believe we've been talking for about like an hour now. Uh, I, I appreciate you hopping on. I, I, it was a fun pod. We, we'll have to have you on maybe midway through the season, yeah. kind of recalibrate, kind of see where we are. Um, yeah, but we need Rob, a film, before we, we need a film breakdown, a, like a summary of. Well, I know you have your videos, and everyone should go to his, go to his uh, page, subscribe, like all yes. that stuff, and check out his film videos when they, uh, especially when the season starts. But I would love to have like a synopsis, something short, just like. You know something big you saw. It could be like five, ten minutes, but I think that'd be awesome coming back after. After Twitter's like, yeah. gonna have that a lot, and then I'll see awesome. if I can figure out how to get something like that because it's a good idea on during the game day. And then another series, I'll tell you guys about it. I guess this is when I'm this is me releasing this idea for everybody who <laughs> listens. But I, I'm gonna try to go through a drive once a game, like the whole drive, where we'll go through what's the defense doing, what's the offense doing, why are they doing it. And we'll just walk through how the That's Bears fine. got in the end zone, didn't get in the end zone, whatever's going on, so that we can start to peel back slowly but surely all these complex layers of what the Bears are and aren't doing. Should be fun. Uh, no, that'd be wait. great. Yeah, that'll be that's the shit I love. I one, that's unique. That that's unique. I love that. And two, it's gonna just educate so many people, myself, you know, any of them Definitely. watching. Cause I love your stuff. I like I said before, your other YouTube channel was great. Uh, I can't wait to see what you get going here. Uh, where can we find you, Rob? I know, like I said, you have a new YouTube channel. What's your Twitter? Where can we find you? I guess I'm over at the Bears blog now. Well, that's neat. Uh, so we're going to be doing a post every day, one way or another. It'll, I, I have no idea. We'll find our voice. But then <laughs> the new YouTube channel, you can just search my name, Robert Schmitz. We should have the th – so I'm going to be trying to get, like, bi-weekly videos. It may end up being weekly because they're, they're a lot of work, and I want to make sure that they can all get the quality they deserve. But uh, there's right. Jordan Love breakdown coming that I can't okay. wait to share. Oh, because God. You're going to break Twitter. You think that that's the thing. That's the thing. What I'm going to tell you is that the Bears fans need to get through the four, first four minutes. You need to trust me that it's interesting because mm. it's – okay, so I'll just share the gist with you again, the sneak peek for everybody. I, I don't think Jordan Love looks that bad, but I think his offensive situation looks terrible. And so I tend to think that Jordan Love – like Perfect. Packers fans are about to get all of the just desserts that Bears fans just had to eat of all of last season, because we're going to hear a lot of Packers fans blaming a lot of things that aren't Jordan Love, and they're going to basically try to pass it all off as excuses. And I don't think yeah. the NFL public cares. Like, Jordan Love, it's time's up. You know what I'm saying? Year four. Like, but you, they, you don't even have a fifth-year option. If he's well, didn't they not, send, didn't they, didn't they give him that second year? Is one year. Name one me year, a quarterback right? that plays on the final year of their deal. Yeah, that's true. This that's is true. It. Like, this yeah. is the trial year. What, and Ooh. especially because they got two first round picks next year. Rob, I know that's what I'm scared of. So, like, ideally for me, people are like, oh, I hope Jordan loves garbage. I hope he's trash. I'm like, no, I hope, I hope the right. man is top. I hope he's all right. Three, you know, just what I mean? all right. Like, you're okay. <laughs> you know, that's what we need. So, you can't, you know, come up here and get, you know, Drake May or Caleb uh, Williams and things like that. So, yes. you, where, do you, where do you actually kind of, based off your film, where do you kind of see it projecting out? 
I I see Jordan Love as throwing for about I, I think in the video I make the case he's going to throw for like 3,300 yards, uh, which is higher than Vegas has him. But that lands him 25th, I'm going off memory, in last year's passing statistics, and I don't think he's a runner. So think mm-hmm. decidedly not good, but not awful. Look, I, I don't want to give the whole breakdown away, but that's he's fair, really fair. good at all the basic stuff. Like take the snap, hit the back of your drop, get the ball out right the other stuff like create your own extend plays he's He's the opposite of fields right yeah he's he's all right but he's not crazy and i don't know if you guys realize this his entire wide receiver core is rookies and sophomores all of them crazy watson looks good though down to nine yeah watson looks great for a guy that missed four games so what if he doesn't play a game like you got Dobbs as your wide receiver one Mm. and your next guy up is Jaden reed and oh good thing you've got your tight ends both rookies, Musgrave. unless you're yeah, looking he at two, uh, two Kasai Duara. Like, I mean, that entire room is well set up for 2024, but it's not 2024. It's 2023. Like, mm. and, and well, that's, that's going to be a good video. It's, it's <laughs> definitely. <your fun>. <laughs> I'm <laughs> yeah. You're going to break that's the internet. Awesome. I still think you're going to break the internet. Bears fans, <laughs> <I hope> so. <laughs> you just said past yeah. four minutes. Watch past four minutes. You got to watch the whole thing. Come on now. Yeah. Well, anyways, we're going to have, we'll have your YouTube, your new YouTube link in the description. We'll have your socials and everything. Rob, man, thank, thank you. you so much for hopping on. We'll have you on again. Okay. Anytime. Yeah, appreciate so much, guys. it. Thank you. All right. Bye. That was Robert Schmidt. We appreciate him hopping on. Like I said, I thought it was a great episode. Thank you, man. Again, I think it was a good one, man. What do you think? Man, like I said, I said this before, I just love hearing these, you know, someone like Robert, you know, when they break down the tape, it's like, it's what you always want because he talked about how he gets that information that we don't, that all 22. So you can really Mm -hmm. see how things are playing out. And when we watch from the broadcast view, there's little things here and there that we miss, right? We Mm -hmm. only see the end result. So it's nice to actually see like how well players are playing like their strengths, their, their weaknesses and all that. So yeah, I love it. I eat it up. I can't wait for that Jordan, uh, his uh jordan love uh, breakdown jordan love breakdown too that's gonna be great yeah he um and i just started watching probably all 22 probably in depthly probably last couple years but even then i haven't really studied the way that he does and i don't think you have either just because he's been doing what five years he said five years years. crazy yeah and it's he's remarkable he said it like it's an expertise your your first year you catch some things your second year you start answering asking questions why did brisker i think he said why did brisker shade here and then year three it's just another level each it's it's like anything else you know if you put in the time you're going to notice um a huge difference and we can't thank him enough uh if you like his content again we already mentioned it but if you like it you liked him here go check out his youtube he's starting it over um he already had a great breakdown that we touched on mooney versus claypool he'll have a lot more content coming out um, and then if you like our content, if you like the podcast, if you like BFR in general, uh, just go ahead and hit that like button. It really does help the channel grow. Um, and if you enjoy the content sub, uh, we'll have, again, we're, we're probably going to have a few more episodes here uh, to kind of get us through until training camp hits. Uh, a few more guests lined up. Uh, we appreciate everyone that's tuning in, showing love, um, and we'll see you next time. Absolutely. Peace.